Okay, so this video is going to be going through the PowerPoint that you will need to have downloaded. You can download that on Canvas or through Classcraft, either way. Um, but this goes directly along with chapters 4 through 6. There is a video of me reading those chapters. So um, that's on YouTube. If you need the link, let me know. Alright, so the first slide is vocabulary. Um, You've got clamored, ergo, frenzied, insolent, peckish, and reverberated, and you're going to use those words in sentences that, as they relate to this section. Um, so, like for peckish, um, Maria was telling Bruno in the chapters that she uh, that he had never known what it was like to be hungry, and he thought to himself, "Well, you know, I'm actually a little bit hungry right now." Um, and we know, as the readers, that that's not what she meant, but Bruno, being so childish, doesn't understand. Alright, so uh, slide 5 says, what clues can you find in the, ne in the text in chapter 4 that identify what Bruno and Gretel saw from the bedroom window? Um, Reread the first page of the chapter, and it will tell you specifically... And it wants to, it, what it's trying to get at is what clues can you find that point to this being a concentration camp? Alright, <clears throat> how would you describe Mother's reaction to Maria overhearing her comment, we should never have let the Fury come to dinner? Keep in mind that speaking out against the Fuhrer or Hitler, speaking out against Hitler was bad. Anybody caught doing that would be automatically sent to a concentration camp. Um, and you couldn't trust people. You, you didn't know if your best friend was a Nazi spy or if they would turn you in. And so think about how Mother reacts to that um, and, and overhearing that, and, and Maria overhearing that comment. All right, slide seven says, while Bruno was at the train station, he noticed two trains separated by a platform. What was the author's purpose for including this description? How did Bruno feel about the trains? Alright, so this is where Bruno sees that both trains are going the same direction, and there are all sorts of people crowding into the other train, and he doesn't understand because on his train there's lots of space. Knowing what you know about how the Germans transported their prisoners, what do you think the purpose for including this scene was? The other people on the train next to Bruno's train were probably going to a concentration camp. Alright. <clears throat> what inferences can you make from the descriptions of the two trains in Chapter 5? Um, again, where are they going? How do you know that? I need to know, I, I don't care what you think, I want to know why you think it. So what made you think whatever it was that you thought? Okay, citing evidence from the text. That's important, citing evidence from the text. Describe what the scene between father and the group of five men implied to the reader. Alright, so Bruno overhears the men talking about the previous commandant. And it, ask yourself, does it sound like they thought he was doing a good job? And kind of go with that as you're writing your response here. What did Father and Bruno's conversation tell you about Father? How would you explain Bruno's willingness to speak freely to even shout at his father? Um, listen to the conversation. Hear what they're saying. Um, and ask yourself, what does that tell you about their characters? And then, why do you think Bruno was so willing to speak his mind to his father? Think about how he truly feels. <clears throat> Alright, when Bruno asked about the people in the striped pajamas, father responded, those people. Well, they're not people at all, at least not as we understand the term. How did this statement make you feel and why? Do not forget the why part. <clears throat> Father told Bruno to accept the situation in which you find yourself and everything will be so much easier. 
Why do you suppose Bruno seemed less satisfied with that advice? <coughs> Maria warned Bruno not to say what he really felt because it could cause trouble. What trouble could Bruno's outspokenness bring his family? Explain. All right, think back to the slide where Mother f gets nervous about the fact that Maria overheard her and, and what was talked about there. Um, explain why Bruno's speaking his mind specifically about the Commandant and the work he's doing, why that could cause trouble. <clears throat> Alright, so this is a mini research project. Um, it's not, it, it's really going to be condensed into these, uh -oh, these three boxes, so don't stress it. <clears throat> You're going to research the history of Auschwitz and Birkenau, the concentration camp during World War II. Based on your research, record four interesting facts about each topic listed below that other students most likely wouldn't know about the horrific death camp. Alright. You won't know what your classmates know or don't know. So just put four interesting facts that you found surprising. Alright, so how was the site chosen? Uh, family camps, evacuation and death camps, marches, <clears throat> and then, um, the, and, and that's that on that. You can research it by looking at Auschwitz, googling Auschwitz and Birkenau. You can um, think back to prisoner B-3087. Uh, he was at Auschwitz. What, what was happening there? Um, this is, again, the, um, th this is the place where Joseph Mengele was, <clears throat> but um, I don't want you to get confused. Father and Joseph Mengele are not the same people. All right, <clears throat> all right. Chapter, I mean, slide 15 says it's a graphic organizer. It's described the plot that is starting to evolve in the story. In your opinion, did Mother seem complacent in her current situation or frustrated? Complacent means was she happy? You have to explain why you think she was happy or not. And um, then what is the significance of Maria and Bruno's discussion about father and life at Outwith? Why do you think it was important that uh, we saw Maria um, sort of guiding Bruno and telling him the things that she told him? Do you think she would have said that if it wasn't important and serious for him to know that? <clears throat> and then the last one is another graphic organizer. You're going to describe three theories Bruno might be developing about his father or his father's work based on what you've read in chapters 4 through 6 and defend your reasoning. So that's going to happen here. You're just going to click and type. And you can type, 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 type. Um, I would stop here. Your theory does not have to be that big. Um, and then you go to the next one and you type, type, type. And then you can go to the next one and you can type, type, type. Um, if you need to adjust the boxes so that they don't overlap, that's fine. Um, in this box it says describe the overall tone of this section of the novel or what the author's attitude was when he wrote it. Um, so here he's really beginning to have Bruno criticize the Nazis and you can see for the first time Maria begin to show her feelings uh, as she's clenching her fist in anger and staring out at the concentration camp she does not seem happy with father's decision to do this she says he's a good man I know he's a good man because he took care of me when he didn't have to and so it makes me wonder how he can, and then she stopped. But as a, a reader, you can imply, you can infer that she's getting ready to say how he can do something like this, how he could be so cruel to these people. Um, and so, <clears throat> what do you think John Boyne was trying to subtly say in these chapters without actually coming out and saying? And so when you're done, you'll save it, submit it, and you can move on to uh, the
the test one through six in Canvas.